what archaeological sites used to actually look like. Our world is 4.5 billion years old. In that period, dinosaurs died out, the Earth's geology altered, and numerous civilizations rose and fell. All around the world, vestiges of these lost civilizations exist. In today's exciting video, we are going to explore seven archaeological sites and how they actually used to look before getting ruined. So get your trowel and dig in as we discover what archaeological sites looked like. Sky High Citadel Machu Picchu's ruins are about 8,000 feet high in Peru's Urubamba River Valley. When American explorer Hiram Bingham founded in 1911, it scarcely resembled a fortification. To make it hard to assault, the Incans constructed this village high up. However, they evacuated the city in the late 16th century due to a suspected smallpox outbreak, leaving it unknown for years. It overgrew at this period. Since the Incans didn't use cement or mortar, tree roots pierced the remains, making it impossible to remove the greenery without harm. However, Bingham and his staff carefully cleared the undesired plant life for four months, working hours a day. After digging, the crew was astounded by the vast location. Now, after further excavation, the impressive ruin is evident. Though much improved, it's still far from 15th century magnificence. Formerly, the stone homes had thatched roofs of dried grass and were in great form. In addition to residential dwellings, it contained an agricultural zone, a religious region, and a royal sector where historians believe Patakuri Inca Yupanaki ruled from his palace. Since the mountain fortress is exposed to the elements, it's a credit to the Incan's construction skills that any of it survives. Modern males may benefit from Incan council given how fragile specific new structures are. Bronze Giant in the 3rd century BC, Rhodes' harbor had a giant bronze statue. At 105 feet tall, the massive Helios monument was said to be. It was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and is known as the Colossus of Rhodes. The Colossus only stood for 54 years before a devastating earthquake in 226 BC broke it up. Even centuries later, tourists visited the destroyed remains until Arabian forces raided Rhodes in 654 AD and took the Colossus fragments to melt and sell. This was done with 900 camels from the army. Sadly, the wonderful statue is gone. Despite its famed picture across the port, the Colossus of Rhodes never did this. Despite never seeing the monument, middle-aged scholars promoted that famous picture centuries later. And since the harbor is nearly as wide as an American football field, the memorial would have had to be 1,640 feet tall to be proportional. It was impossible then. The world's highest statue, India's Statue of Unity, is just 597 feet tall as of today. Therefore, the Colossus was more likely to appear like this. Sadly, you can't become all-knowing without crushing some dreams. Hey, without likes and subscribers, you'll never know everything, so you won't miss another of my great fact-based videos. Now, where were we? Insanity in Italy the 79 AD eruption of Italy's Mount Vesuvius is the most famous natural calamity. The volcano's ash cloud developed Pompeii, eliminating a whole population. After 1,700 years, researchers found the Roman city and were shocked. The heavy ash layer protected everything after all that time. So good, much of the town is still identifiable. Age has hardly harmed walls, buildings, paved streets, and some art. Check out this street food vendor. Some things never change. Despite that, it's nothing like the 12,000-person metropolis that thrived for years before the eruption. The bustling town boasted an amphitheater, gym, port, and intricate water system. The Jupiter Temple was one of the numerous Roman deity temples. Jupiter's temple collapsed in 62 AD's earthquake. Nowadays, just fragments remain. If you can handle being so close to Mount Vesuvius, Pompeii is incredible. The Real Wall in a Game of Thrones, the Wall is a vast frozen megastructure that repels assaults from the north of Westeros. Originally based on a wall in northern England, did you know that? If you went there right now, you'd discover Hadrian's Wall, 73 mile remains from coast to coast. In 122 AD, Hadrian ordered its construction to isolate the Roman Empire in Britain from the barbarians up north. Does that sound familiar? The natural wall was stone, not ice, and shorter than George R. R. Martin's fictitious barrier. However, the scant relics now are far smaller than it was. At times, the barrier was over 20 feet tall and terrifying. By the 4th century, 40-mile castles and forts had been erected along the wall. In addition, the massive complex included 17 more enormous forts and several observation towers to keep anything out. After the Romans departed Britain in the 5th century, the walls soon deteriorated. People started excavating large stones to create churches, farms, and dwellings. This practice halted in the 19th century, but the harm was done. Former mile castles are now waist-high stone pieces. 
Thankfully, White Walkers don't exist. The Plundered Parthenon Old Rome wasn't the only opulent culture. Atop Athens Acropolis, one of history's most famous temples was erected between 447 and 432 BC at the ancient Greek Empire's peak. The 65 marble columns and brightly painted friezes supported the 23,000 square foot Parthenon. Incredibly, a 39 foot Athena statue guarded the shrine. The 5th century AD saw the destruction of this gold and ivory masterpiece. Christian Byzantines, who invaded Greece in the 6th century AD, may have robbed it. They turned the Parthenon into a Catholic Church and destroyed several friezes after taking Athens. It stayed that way until 1458 when it changed hands again. The Ottoman Empire took over the Greek capital and turned the sacred edifice into a mosque. A few hundred years later, Christian soldiers bombarded the Parthenon with cannonballs. The Ottomans stored volatile munitions in the shrine, making this worse. A massive explosion from cannonballs hitting munitions tore through the structure and caused significant structural damage. Later in the 19th century, British Earl Thomas Bruce took some of the Parthenon's marble friezes and sculptures to London, where they remained. Due to all this, the Parthenon no longer seems as dazzling as it did in its prime. Chilling in Chichen Itza In Mexico's Yucatan state, Fantasticiza is one of the best preserved ancient pyramids in the world. If you are in the mood to relax and soak in some rays, visit. Once home to 35,000 people, this 1,500-year-old Mayan metropolis is now empty, and this makes the site four square miles of 26 ruins to investigate. El Castillo is the most renowned. This massive temple rises 80 feet above the main plaza and contains 365 steps, including the highest platform on its four sides. The fact that this number matches a solar year is no accident. Since the ancient Mayans had strange rituals, it's definitely tied to their top rituals. A cenote, that's a water-filled sinkhole, was the pyramid's foundation. At the pyramid's apex lies a deep trench that leads to the cenote. Mayans believed that sacrificing one unfortunate person and dumping them into the pit would bring rain during droughts. Ironically, a drought caused the city's abandonment in the 15th century. After the forest took over, the temple was hardly visible when excavated in the early 1900s. Great Giza Ancient Egypt's Great Pyramid, the oldest of the Seven Wonders, remains awe-inspiring. The tomb of Pharaoh Khufu, built 4,500 years ago, is today a top tourist attraction. Previously, it was different. Early on, the Great Pyramid was sleek and shining from top to bottom. When the Egyptians polished the step-light construction, it shone white in the sun. They even gold-plated the pyramid's tip, making it more shimmering than it is now. Since the massive monument is built of approximately 9,000 tons of granite, over 550,000 tons of mortar, and and over 6 million tons of limestone, how did they build it? Well, the laborers would go southeast of Giza to the Tura quarries across the Nile and pound wooden wedges into the stone. Then they'd moisten the stone. By absorbing water, the wedges expanded and cracked the granite into blocks. On sleds, these blocks were transported from the quarry over the Nile to the pyramid site. After arriving, the massive blocks had to be dragged up the pyramid using a sophisticated ramp and pulley system and smoothed down. Almost little remains after this hard labor. Throughout history, individuals have removed white limestone and gold tip for other constructions. The voyage through ancient civilizations and their ruins is like solving a human history puzzle. Each archaeological site, from Machu Picchu to Pompeii, reveals lost tales of ancient civilizations' achievements and tragedies. Visiting these relics gives us a look into ancient life. Unfortunately, archaeologists and historians will never be able to restore these places to their former glory. The ruins silently symbolize the transience of human progress, and the heritage of our forefathers. Let us contemplate human civilization's vast fabric and the tales waiting to be discovered as we gaze at ancient marvels.